Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing lovely. I'm so excited for today's video because we are going to attempt at least to make ravioli. So we're gonna make some homemade pasta and then also make some homemade ricotta cheese to put inside the little ravioli pockets. Should be delicious, I'm really excited. I've wanted to make this for pretty much a year. Basically, I think like last February, I made my own cheese for the very first time and it was so good and I remember at the time thinking, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool to put this into little pasta pockets and make ravioli and it only took me 11 months to finally do it. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today. I got this for Christmas. It's a KitchenAid pasta, what's it called though? A pasta roller and cutter set. So you just attach it to your KitchenAid and use it to roll out pasta. I've wanted one of these for so long. The possibilities are endless. I'm so excited to make my own like spaghetti and just everything. It's gonna be so cool. So yeah. Um, if you don't have one of these or it's your first time making pasta and you just don't know if you're gonna want to do it very often, I have seen people who just full on use a rolling pin. It just takes a lot longer because you do want your pasta to be quite thin, so it's pasta. So it's gonna require a lot of elbow grease, but it can be done. So don't let the thought of not being able to buy one of these stop you. If you are curious and you are inspired to make your own pasta today, definitely give it a try. And I bet you it'll work out. Definitely let me know if you do. So as per usual, I have a million things that I wanna to talk to you guys about, but it's already quite late in the day, like it's 12.30. So I wanna get this started and then once everything is resting, cause you make the dough and you need to let it sit for an hour and then the cheese will take a while. So I wanna get started, get everything going and then we can catch up and chat and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna get everything ready and then we will start off by making the dough. And you know me, we're obviously gonna try to make this sourdough just because it's more fun. So let's do that. As per usual, I'm going to link the recipe that I'm following below. I've never ever made pasta before, but it does, oh gosh, I see my hair. It does seem really easy. So we'll find out together, okay? First thing we're gonna do is add roughly three eggs to a bowl. The recipe says to make sure it's 165 grams. So I'm basically just gonna weigh and add three eggs and then maybe take a little bit out or add a little bit more until it gets to 165 grams. So yeah. All right, we have three eggs into the bowl and as you cannot see, there we go. It's 148, oh gosh, it's 147 grams. And the recipe said if that happens, you can fill the rest of the weight up with olive oil. So I'm just gonna do that until it gets to 165 grams. There we go. And then now we're gonna add 40 grams of sourdough starter. Okay, love you, darling, bye. Sorry, my man's on his lunch break, so he just called me. Okay, next we're going to take, you can use any whisker you have. I have a sourdough whisk that I literally never get to use, so I'm gonna actually use it right now to just whisk the starter, the eggs, and the olive oil together. So we're gonna move this off to the side for now, and you're going to either, if you have a food processor, you can also make it in there, but I'm just gonna use my KitchenAid and the dough hook and make the dough that way. So now something that I had never even heard of until I was looking into how to make pasta, is there a specific flour that you can get for pasta? This is called the zero zero style, or you might see like tipo, like T-I-P-O, I think that's Italian, <laughs> zero zero. Any kind of flour that is specific for pizza and pasta should be good. I think in a pinch you could probably get away with all purpose flour, but I think this is like a lighter, Flour. I don't really know why, but the recipe stressed to really use this. So if you can get your hands on it, then give it a try. And if you can get an Italian brand one, that would be even better, especially if you find that you struggle with digesting gluten and flour. Italian flour is just so much easier to digest. It's so much better for you. Uh, but I just get my groceries from Walmart and they don't have fancy things there. So <laughs> I make do with what I can find. So we're gonna add 300 grams of flour to our bowl. And now we're just gonna pour the egg mixture into the flour. And then make sure you have the dough kneading hook attachment and then just knead on a medium setting until it forms an actual dough. Okay, here's the dough. 
and I've just wrapped it tightly in plastic wrap. Now it needs to sit for at least an hour at room temperature. And while we wait, we can get started making the ricotta cheese for the filling. So the ricotta seems like a very easy recipe. Definitely this or farmer's cheese is gonna be the perfect beginner cheese recipe if like me, you've never really done this before. So to a large pan, right here as you saw, I added this entire carton which is two liters of whole milk. And I'm also gonna add some salt, half a teaspoon. And then stir occasionally with a wooden spoon and we're just gonna warm this up until it starts to bubble on top. Make sure you do this on a really low heat setting because you don't want it to burn. This will probably take about 20 minutes, so I will update you once it's ready. While we wait, we're just gonna add the pasta flattener doohickey thingamajig. I always wondered what the heck this was for. There's this little contraption on here and it would always unscrew. It just annoyed me. Like, why did they make it like this? What's the point? And now I get it. This is where you add all of your KitchenAid attachments. So I think you just kind of pop it in. Ha ha. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I'm really excited to try this. Now, while we wait, I just kind of wanted to rant a little. Um, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't try not to rant, but just chat with you guys, okay? So I've been getting a lot of mean comments, I would say, lately about how I dress and how it's not modest enough. And in comparison to how I used to dress, I think I dress really good. I'm sure there's always room for improvement literally in every aspect of my life, and I'm working on it, and I'm letting God change me in whatever way he sees fit. But I think that it is really not helpful when you provide truth, which I know Christians are called. We are called to provide truth and guidance to other people. But I think that there is a huge difference between doing that with love and doing that with hate and like just being mean spirited. And anyways, some people have been really gracious, which I appreciate, but there have also been a lot of people who are being like unreasonably mean. And I think that, that makes Christians look bad because that is not what the Bible calls us to do at all. We are called to speak truth with love, not with hate. Also kind of in the same vein as modest dressing. Yesterday I did a little Instagram story and I was talking about how I live, you guys all know this, so people on Instagram might not know that I live with my fiance and we, we bought this house together two years ago and now we're getting married, like we're not even married yet and we live together and we have sex together and all of that kind of stuff that is, none of that is holy or biblical and definitely not what I would recommend other young girls do or my own kids one day, like I definitely don't think that that is the best way to go about it, but like I said in my Instagram, life is messy. We don't always live the way that God calls us to, especially for a lot of us. Like I didn't grow up Christian. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know literally any of it. And so I think sometimes people who maybe grow up, this is just my assumption. I'm not, I'm not these people obviously, but I think sometimes people just grow up in like what I picture to be a really perfect way where they were actually raised correctly. And so then they can't understand how someone could live completely differently and make all of these mistakes and they therefore are really cruel about it. And I just think you should consider yourself lucky that you are raised right and something that I definitely hope I can do for my kids so that they don't go down the same path that I do. But yeah, anyways, I talked about how I still live with my fiance and then I got a lot of mean messages from people saying, oh my gosh, how can you call yourself Christian and then live with your fiance and do all of these things? And like, you don't know me, you don't know that we did this years ago before I ever found God. So. Anyways, the internet has just been annoying to me the last day. <laughs> so yeah, moral of the story, judge if you will, but do it from a place of love and actually providing help and guidance and not just being cruel. And I know it's the internet. Like I replied to a couple of these mean DMs that I got just explaining and they were all like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even think you were gonna read this message. So just remember, that the internet might not be real life, but the people are real on there and they might read your messages and maybe you'll feel bad about what you said because it wasn't nice. <laughs> okay, anyways, I think that our milk is ready, so let's make some cheese. So if you have a thermometer hanging around, you can use that and you want it to reach 185 degrees. Yeah, we're pretty much there, so that's good. If you don't have a thermometer, you basically just want it to look like it does right now where it's a little bit of bubbles and almost like you might not be able to tell in the video, but there's like a film on top. That's when you know that it is ready for the next step. So now bring the heat on your stove top all the way down to the very lowest setting. And then you're gonna pour in either three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, or I have three tablespoons of white vinegar here. 
Okay, and then now slowly stir for two minutes and hopefully if it all goes to plan, it will start to form little curds, which is the ricotta cheese. I just wanted to add one last thought to my rant. Basically what I'm trying to say is I think that it is really helpful if you can provide grace to people that did not grow up Christian and are finding the faith and finding their relationship with God and slowly transforming their lives. Like I think a lot of people, and I feel like I get so much pressure for this now, like just because I have now given my life to God, I'm expected to just be perfect. Just like that, wake up tomorrow, my whole existence to be completely different, which I think is really unrealistic. For some people, they really might be able to just like transform everything overnight. And I love that for them, but I cannot relate. Like I'm not that kind of person. I take baby steps in everything that I do. And I am slowly trying to change who I am in every way possible so that I can please God. But it seems like a lot of people on the internet now, the minute you say that you are Christian or that you believe in God, they expect you to be a completely different person. I just don't think that that is helpful. It is good, like I was saying, to provide guidance and help people, but to just be like, how can you say that you like God when you still do X, Y, Z? It's not helpful and it's mean, and I don't think that it is honoring God or helpful. Really, it's not helpful. If we are called as Christians to bring other people to the faith, being mean like that is just doing the opposite of what we are supposed to be doing. So yeah, provide grace, be gracious, and thank you to everyone who has been, because most of you are. Um, Okay, take a look at that. Now that is some serious curds going on here. So the next step, take it off the heat and cover it. Gosh, <laughs> one hand. Cover it with a tea towel and let it sit for 20 minutes. While we're waiting, you can use your time to get your colander all ready because after this, we're going to strain the curds and the whey and separate them. So get yourself a colander and a bowl, put the colander in the bowl, and then you're gonna grab some cheesecloth. This is quite important, but you can easily get this pretty much anywhere. I'll link below the kind that I have, but any will work. And you wanna fold it over four times so that there's four layers of cloth, and then pop that right down into your colander. Okie dokie, it's been 20 minutes, so now we are going to strain our cheese. So I'm just gonna use a ladle and ladle, little bits at a time of the cheese right on top of the cheesecloth. And this is definitely looking like ricotta, which is so cool. Seriously, other cheese looks really complicated because you need to get, I forget what it's called, like re, re, something with an R, but it's some kind of bacteria thing that you need to buy. And then a lot of cheese has to sit for six months before you can eat it. But this is the kind of cheese that you can use right away. So definitely if you're really curious about making cheese, but you want to start off with something easy, this kind of method is genuinely super simple. And that's what it looks like. And you can see all of the way down here in the bowl. So we're going to leave this for 20 minutes and let it drain. And then after it's cooled down a bit, you can then squeeze it out with your hands to get any remaining liquid. Okay, we're almost ready to start rolling out the dough. So excited. Before we do it, we're just going to prep the cheese filling. So I've got our bowl of ricotta. Oh, did I not show you guys? Okay. So afterwards, once I squeezed it all out, there's a ton of whey. So I just added it to a jar. You could do plenty of things with whey. I like to use this to make sourdough bread and basically swap out the water for whey. So I'll probably do that, but if there's any other recipes or suggestions, I will maybe write them on Instagram. I'm gonna look into it because this is quite a lot. And for sourdough, I probably only need half the jar. So yes, but there's a lot of whey. Don't, don't throw it out. It's very nutritious, really good for you. Good for your animals, all that kind of stuff. But I'm just gonna put it in the fridge for now. Anyways, after I let it sit for 20 minutes, this is what the ricotta looks like. You really want to, especially if you're making ravioli, let it sit so that it dries out as much as possible because you don't want your filling to be liquidy and runny. If that happens, then it will seep out of your ravioli and it won't work properly. So make sure that it's nice and dry. Okay, so to our mixing bowl, I'm gonna add 100 grams of ricotta. This is probably at least double that. So if this all works out, I'm gonna make more tomorrow and then put the rest in the freezer. It will last, your finished ravioli should last in the freezer for at least a month. So it'll be a really great, easy meal that's still homemade which i love doing i love stocking my freezer full of homemade meals for the nights where i'm just kind of feeling lazy and tired or in a rush so that's what i'm gonna do anyways hey mama you wanna come say hi 
Yeah. In addition to ricotta, we're gonna add some mascarpone. I definitely said that wrong. Mascarpone, probably, I don't know. Never even heard of this before, but the recipe calls for it, so I thought I would give it a try. So we're gonna do 100 grams of this as well. Ooh, this is super creamy. It's kind of like a cream cheese. And then I'm gonna add 30 grams of grated fresh Parmesan. One egg. And then I just added some basil, Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper, and then we're gonna stir it all up. Okay, that looks like a pretty good filling. I'm just gonna taste it. You wanna make sure that it's really flavorful so that it will come through the actual pasta noodle and taste good still. Mmm, oh, oh yeah. Mmm, that was really good, okay. So we're gonna set this aside now. I'll probably just put it in the fridge to wait. And we're gonna roll out the dough, finally try my pasta roller. So excited about this. Sorry, that camera is not the vibe, but I had to get a close-up shot. <laughs> Just a real quick intermission because I wanted to let you guys know that the Holistic Health Bundle I was telling you guys all about last week is officially here and available only until January 10th. So I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check it out. Basically, if you forgot, this is a bundle of over 130 different ebooks and e-courses all about holistic health. If you were to buy each of these individually, it would literally be almost $9,000, but you can get it right now for only 50. This is a culmination of years of expertise from top health professionals, doctors, nutritionists, and wellness experts. There's a huge range of topics from herbal remedies, natural cleaning products, postpartum health, cycle tracking, natural birth control, hormone balancing, immune system support, liver and oral health, delicious nourishing recipes, like seriously so many that I can't wait to try holistic pregnancies, parasite cleanses, meditation, detoxing, literally everything really that you could ever want to know about holistic health is in this bundle. There is hours and hours worth of information and it is just seriously such a blessing. Basically, it's a one-stop library of all the resources you could ever need for achieving optimal health and well-being, and it's literally 99% off right now, only until January 10th. So if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description box below. This really is such an incredible deal and a perfect way to jumpstart your health journey and have a really amazing 2024. Just cleaning up first before we get started. Still loving my homemade pine salt from last week's video. It literally smells so good. Been really liking it. Oh, and someone commented recently saying that I should try selling my unpaper towels on the Milkmaid's Pico, my small business, and I'm totally have that in the works. It's actually something that I thought would be cool, but I didn't think anyone would be interested. But when one of you commented and suggested it, it just kind of fueled my spark. So that might be one of the next products that I launched. I also have some clothes and other aprons. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited, but sorry. That's not the point of this video, I won't ramble. <laughs> okay, so we have our dough here. It's been sitting for closer to two hours. Yeah, maybe an hour and a half. I don't really know, but it said one to two hours, so we're totally fine. So I'm just gonna take it out of the plastic wrap now and cut it into four pieces. To make sure it doesn't stick, I'm going to flour with some semolina flour. Uh, apparently this is an essential ingredient for homemade pasta. I've never even heard of semolina flour before. <laughs> Sorry, you can hear Bobo. She's playing with something. What is it, Lena? What? What? You got your ball? Lena. Oh, it's kind of weird, like grainy. Feels like really tiny couscous. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to sprinkle this, cut the dough in four pieces. Bubbling! I'm trying to talk here, you goose. <laughs> Hi, yay, yay. Okay, leave one piece out and then you're gonna put the rest back into the plastic wrap for now so it doesn't dry out. Both of them are going crazy right now. What's going on with you two? Lena. Okay, so it says to roll it out into a six or eight inch little oval. Hi, it's man. You wanna say hi to everyone? I feel like that's maybe a little longer. I'm really nervous. <laughs> okay, so it says to flour the inside of your pasta roller as well so it doesn't stick. I feel like this isn't gonna work, but we'll try it. Lena!
Okay. Now we take our piece of pasta and we're gonna run it through. Start off on level one and then progress as you go all the way to five because you want it to be quite thin. Wow, okay, so go through twice on the first setting. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay, now we're going to increase to level two and then we'll progress as we go. How do I, oh, okay, so pull the knob out and then back in. There we go. This is so cool. Amazing. All right, I'm just gonna continue working my way up to level five and then I'll update you guys. Oh my word, this is cool. Okay, so you know it's ready because it's supposed to be, no, this is hard for me to show you guys, but it's supposed to be semi-translucent. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can see my hands through it. That's when you know that it's good. And then we're just gonna put our pasta right onto the parchment paper. It says you can fold it. I'm kind of paranoid that it's gonna stick to itself though. So I definitely should have listened to my gut because the pasta noodles did stick together and ended up having to re-roll all of the other ones other than the first one. So do not do what I did and fold them on top of each other. If you have to fold it for space saving, then make sure you put a slice of parchment paper in between so that they don't stick. Just have it on the tray here. We're gonna cover it with another piece of parchment paper. And I'm just gonna repeat that exact process with the other three pieces and then I'll get back to you. Hi kiddos, you wanna say hi to everyone? Hi mama. Hi. But you were out already for so long this morning. Hi. Handsome man. Hi. No. Goodness, you're so handsome. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I know, you're my handsome man. Big stretch. Yes. Hi Lena. How are you? You're so pretty. Okay, that was unreasonably fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to make more pasta in the future. So I have four pieces now, oh gosh, of the ravioli dough all rolled out here and we're gonna start filling it. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Okay, so to make our ravioli, grab yourself a little teaspoon and we're gonna do a scoop of the cheese filling, like so. Pop it down in the middle, gosh, of the dough, like so. And then you wanna make sure there is roughly a two finger gap in between each piece of cheese, filling, whatever you wanna call this. And then just continue halfway down your sheet of dough. Then grab the other half of the dough and we're gonna fold it over. And then gently press down all around the little cheese pieces and you want to, as best you can, get rid of any air pockets and just like really make sure that the filling is secure. Cause the last thing you want is it to fall out when you're actually baking the noodles. And if you find that your pasta has dried out quite a bit, it says to put a little bit of water in between. Kind of like when you're closing a pierogi or something, you know how you put a little water around the rim. So you can do that same kind of thing here if you need to. It feels like there's definitely still air, but it also is probably just squishy from the cheese. But I feel like this is a good attempt, at least for our first try. I just bought this adorable ravioli cutter set from Amazon. It comes with quite a few cute little heart ones. So if this turns out, I'm totally gonna do some ravioli for Valentine's Day or something fun like that. Also have a big circle, a small circle, and a square. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use. Maybe the big circle? Yeah, I think we're gonna go for a big circle today. I definitely wanna stress to you guys that you also don't need these ravioli cutters. You can just use a knife. This is just to make it like look, look prettier, but if it's your first time and you don't wanna spend any money, but you really wanna make your own, you totally can. You don't need all of these tools, although this set was only $20, so it's not that bad. And then you can also use this cute little lattice roller dude as well. All right, so there's our first batch and all of the excess dough I'm keeping and I'll probably roll it out again. I hope that's okay. I'm just gonna cover it so it doesn't dry out, but like what a waste otherwise. So I'm probably just gonna do that. And yeah, I'm just gonna continue the process now with all of them. I might try out the other cutters. I might try the roller. I find the stamp a little hard to get it a very neat cut. So I might try the roller next time just to experiment, but yeah, you really can't go wrong and it seems really easy. 
I am really, really excited about this and I can't wait to try it. I seriously can't believe how easy it was to actually make this ravioli. It's so fun. So here I am just cutting out a few more. Once they're all ready, you can pop them in a pot of heavily salted boiling water and cook for five to seven minutes. And then you can serve it with a cream sauce or I just did a classic tomato sauce here and it was so freaking delicious. Oh my gosh, you have to try this. And then if you have any leftover, you can just pop them on to a baking tray. Make sure that they're not overlapping or anything like that. And then put them into the freezer for a few hours just until they are fully frozen you could even leave it overnight and then once they're frozen you just pop them into a plastic bag and they should last in the freezer for at least a month and then when it comes time to actually cook them it's probably going to take closer seven to ten minutes just because they are starting from frozen but other than that it's all the same and yeah definitely try this out oh my gosh that's all. I'm so excited to eat this pasta now. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know if you try making it yourself or if you have any recipe suggestions or other pasta style things that I should make. I feel like I really want to try doing some kind of meat ravioli next. I feel like that'd be cool. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and follow me on Instagram at Gwen the Milkmaid and check out my small business, The Milkmaid Supply Co. for beautiful handmade linen aprons, tallow whips, and other things like that. Also, I just went through my closet again and I added a bunch more listings to shopgwen.com as well. So if you want some affordable secondhand clothing, then check that out. Everything will be linked in the description. And I will also link all of the recipes and the supplies that I used to make the pasta in the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye. Hi, baby. You on daddy's clothes? Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. What a handsome man. Hi, guys. It's quite a few days later. I was just finishing editing the video. Don't mind my no makeup and everything. I just wanted to. And in my pajamas, <laughs> I wanted to just add like a little ending because I feel that the video is maybe a little bit more negative than I would have liked. And I always hate when that happens. And um, yeah, it turns out, I didn't even realize at the time, but I was just feeling really, really low about all of the pressure that I was feeling to be a completely different person. And I'm just feeling really overwhelmed and really stressed. And actually that same night, I was curled up in the fetal position, just bawling my eyes out because I was feeling so overwhelmed to the point where I almost wanted to like throw in the towel and just give up on trying to transform because it felt really insurmountable and just really, really overwhelming. And anyways, yeah, I was just doing a little bit of reflection and trying to pray and just like figure out why am I having like a mental breakdown right now? <laughs> And I was talking to my fiance about it all and he was helping to calm me down a little bit, which side note, like seriously, God knew what he was doing when he put a man and a woman together because I don't know about you guys, but I am like so emotional. Like just girls are kind of crazy like that, which can be a blessing in many ways, but sometimes a curse. And so it's so nice to be with a man who's just so like solid and calm to just like help you take a breather when you're having a freak out. So anyways, I've come to a conclusion and you might not agree with this. I might not even agree with myself in a week or a month or a year. Like I always am changing my mind, but I feel like I was having a mental breakdown because of the pressure from other people. And when I actually pray and I talk to God, I feel like I hear him saying that like I'm on the right path and I'm doing a good job and I can just slowly transform. Because at least for me, I'm such like a small step kind of gal that I just can't change overnight. And if I feel like I have to, then I am more likely to just give up entirely. So for me, I feel like I just need to take it one day at a time and slowly but surely transform. So for an example, when it comes to modesty, like I'm even just thinking about my transformation in terms of how I used to dress versus how I dress now, even if it might not be modest enough for some people. The reason that that happened was not because I felt I was not because I heard other people tell me that I need to dress more modest. It happened naturally as I grew closer to God and I learned more about how he wants me to live that I would start putting on my tiny little mini dresses and I would start to feel just like naturally uncomfortable. Like it just happened. It wasn't because people told me to change. It was just because God changed my heart and also because I saw other girls dressing modest and that inspired me. So I've come to the conclusion that first of all, baby steps is okay, okay? Don't let anyone tell you that it's not. Obviously it would be 
great if you could just change like that but if that is not in your wheelhouse then slowly change take your time if you have to it's better than not changing at all and not becoming who god wants you to be at all so baby steps are okay at least as far as i'm concerned and that's what i'm going to do because i really don't think god wants me to have a mental breakdown whenever i think about all the ways he wants me to change and just totally giving up i think god is okay with me taking my time and being gracious because he is so compassionate and amazing and just the best and we love him and number two i think it is way more effective if we want to help others come closer to god and to live godly is to just inspire them because when it comes again to the modesty i was inspired by girls that i saw who were covering up their skin more and i thought they just looked so elegant and way more beautiful and that is what made me want to dress more modest and so i think that that is just a lot more effective like just lead by example show the world what it means to be godly to be christian and let them come to you with questions rather than just seeking people out and telling them that they're not doing good enough um especially people on the internet like i don't know I get messages like the same one all the time and so it starts to get annoying and not actually helping and I feel like it kind of almost stunts my growth because when people tell me to do something I just have that kind of personality where I don't want to do it now like I don't want to be told what to do so I feel like if you don't tell me what to do and you let God tell me that I will do it he's the only person that I actually will listen to everyone else is just like annoying and you slow down my progress because now every time I pray to God being like okay show me how you want me to dress all i think about is how annoyed i am at everyone else for telling me so that's my message to you that's my thoughts my updated thoughts baby steps are better than nothing and um lead by example after the last couple of weeks and all of the messages i've been getting i'm starting to truly understand what it might have been like if i had grown up in a christian household and was raised by some parents and just a culture that was really strict and told me what to do like now i understand the whole phenomenon of the catholic school girl who goes a little wild because when you are so boxed in and so controlled it is really really tempting to just completely reject it all so anyways that's my updated thoughts i just wanted to come on here and tell you what i have been thinking since filming the video and um yeah i think i was also just feeling really upset because i was getting a lot of messages people especially guys not that it matters but i don't know it makes me extra mad that it's men sending me messages hating on my fiance and just saying really mean things about him they don't even know him and i think that also just really overwhelmed me the whole thing was just really stressing me out and i had to take a couple of days of not looking at messages and just try to talk to god and reflect and i swear um i've come to the conclusion that i just need to follow god's plan for me and trust that he will change me in his own perfect time and that i don't need to uh put so much thought into what other people are saying because i know that i will change the way god wants me to change as he lets me change so yeah that's all that's my little update i had to just come on here and try to end this a little bit more positively because i was cringing a lot whilst editing yeah okay love you lots and i'll see you next week bye Hi, Mama. What a handsome man. Oh my goodness, look at my handsome boy. <laughs> Teddy bear boy, yes.